economic output is on the rise, the Bank of Japan ended its negative interest rate experiment and the Japanese yen hit a 34-year low. Is Japan smiling again? Economic stagnation lifts as deflation fades. Imagine a location where all matters pertaining to money are immobilized for nearly 30 years. Your house mortgage interest rate is almost zero. You pay your remains constant and the cost of your Unagi bowl remains the same. That, after all, was the situation in Japan. The cost of goods and services fluctuated somewhat, although this wasn't always the case. Japan has been the starting point for some of the largest economic experiments since the conclusion of World War II. The Bank of Japan has now determined that it is time to abandon its most recent experiment and stop offering negative interest rates. The Bank of Japan, also known as the BOJ, increased rates for the first time since 2007. With YCC gone, negative rates are also gone. What made Japan choose to run its economy in such a different way from the rest of the world then? And how will daily life be affected nationwide by this significant change? Growth in Japan has not always been this sluggish. The economy was once expanding so quickly that it appeared as though it may soon surpass the US as the world's biggest. Japan's post-war destruction gave rise to an accomplishment known as the economic miracle. Due to the expansion of middle-class homes, there was a significant domestic demand for this growth from the 1960s to the early 1970s. In actuality, Japan's GDP made up around 10 percent of the global economy in the late 1980s. A lot of people had a lot of money and spending carelessly was commonplace. By the late 1980s, the stock market was rising steadily and reaching all-time highs. The price of real estate was even more outrageous. For instance, it was once stated that the land cost of the Imperial Palace in Tokyo was equal to the cost of the state of California. The bust then entered. The sphere popped. In 1989, the BOJ made one of its first shocking moves, a dramatic increase in interest rates. The goal was to control inflation and discourage speculation. The government also implemented policies aimed at cooling the real estate market. Real estate values have also plummeted, and the Nikkei stock price index dropped to half of its highest point. This resulted in a prolonged decline. When the authorities attempted to apply the brakes, the economy came to a grinding standstill. For around 30 years, wage growth and inflation were unheard of in Japan. This indicates that one generation of people learned the meaning of novelty from textbooks on macroeconomics. People get attached to a given product at a certain price when they live in an inflation-free environment. A modest degree of inflation keeps money flowing, which promotes economic growth. Most economies aim for 2% inflation, which is considered very benign. However, as the yellow indicates, Japan's inflation remained below that for a considerable amount of time. How did they implement this then? The BOJ adopted the standard central bank strategy when conditions worsened, cutting interest rates. For instance, the Fed cuts rates to deal with the aftermath of the 08 financial crisis. However, the BOJ persisted with its nearly flat line for almost 20 years. However, it did not aid in the nation's deflation. The BOJ made a bold decision once more in 2013. In an unprecedented move, it unveiled the quantitative and qualitative easing policy, which involves printing large amounts of money and flooding the market with it by aggressively purchasing Japanese government bonds. Although initially effective, Japan experienced deflation once more a few years later. The BOJ then returned to its toolkit. It introduced negative rates in 2016, which caused some economists to disagree. The principal objective was to penalize institutions that hoarded funds and discourage saving. However, that also did not work. As a reaction, the BOJ created a concept known as yield curve regulation. In an attempt to relieve companies and families of the anxiety associated with excessive interest rate fluctuations, the BOJ implemented yield curve management, which involves managing both short and long-term rates. 
by threatening to purchase bonds without always having to do so, it could maintain low interest rates. That did not, however, resolve every issue. How were the businesses affected? Businesses were unable to locate enough lucrative opportunities in Japan for their investments. Many ultimately turned to seeking higher profits overseas, so much so that Japan surpassed China to become the largest foreign holder of US Treasury paper. Everything changed all of a sudden in 2022. The inflation rate returned. Japan has at last achieved its inflation objective of 2%. It was prompted by the difficulty. The war in Ukraine led to increasing energy prices, and the depreciating yen was the second factor. The Bank of Japan kept up loose monetary policies in an effort to boost inflation and the economy. To combat inflation, other major central banks did, however, raise interest rates. Japan was eventually forced to stop its experiment by outside forces. Put differently, Japan did not want this kind of inflation because it was not the result of increased consumer spending. Pay remained low, despite the fact that in January 2023, inflation reached 4.3%, the highest level in decades. Nevertheless, it led to a weakening of the yen, which increased revenues for foreign selling corporations like Toyota and Sony. That eventually started to show some indications of improvement. Business executives who had previously been reluctant to increase compensation due to their concern about having a large amount of fixed costs have recently begun to be receptive to salary increases. The largest salary increase in 30 years were won by the leading labor organization. Thus, at last, on March 19, 2024, the BOJ made a significant move. 17 years after the previous increase, the BOJ has eliminated negative interest rates, removing the yield curve control and effectively cutting down on ETF purchases will result in an increase in interest rates from minus 0.1 to a range of 0 to 0.1 percent. Although it doesn't seem like much, it brings Japan's economy back into line with others. At the top, we questioned what would happen if Japan's experiment with negative interest rates ended. These, then, are a few of the alterations we might anticipate. First interest payments on the government's nearly $8 trillion in debt, roughly twice the size of the US economy, will rise, making mortgages more costly for the first time in decades. Businesses will have the same outcome. It may also strengthen the yen. This implies that travel to Japan may become more costly and Japanese exports may suffer as a result. However, it may also increase the profitability of investments in Japan, and cheaper imports of food and fuel are welcome news for Japanese consumers. After almost three decades of experimental monetary policy and sluggish development, Japan must now adapt to a new economic environment. It is yet unclear what the overall effects of these changes will be. The difficulties of overseeing contemporary economies are brought to light by Japan's experience with decades of economic stagnation and monetary policy experimentation. With far-reaching effects, the decision to remove negative interest rates marks a turning point in the Japanese economy. The nation will keep innovating and adapting as it advances to meet the changing demands of the global economy. Thank you for watching. Until next time.